Deborah, the prophetess married to Lapidoth, whose name in Hebrew means hard-working bee, and who thundered lightning, was a figure of authority and wisdom in Israel. Seated in the shade of a palm tree that would later bear her name, she resolved conflicts by discerning the voice of God. In a memorable episode recorded in Judges, she summoned Barak to lead the people into battle. When he hesitated, insisting on her presence, Deborah assured him of victory, but prophesied that the honor of the conquest would go to a woman, a prophecy that came true. When Jael triumphed over Sisera, Deborah's ability for poetry and praise to God is also evident in her psalms. A rarity in a time dominated by male authorship of scriptures, Deborah's presence as a psalmist sheds light on the perception of intuitive and spiritual femininity amid a predominantly male tradition. Personalities like Job, Isaiah, and King Hezekiah also contributed psalms, but the practice of intertwining prophecy with music was an almost forgotten art. Sustained by inspirational leaders like Moses, Samuel, Saul, Elisha, and David, Deborah's song, possibly the oldest literary piece in the Bible, offers a vivid portrait of Israelite civilization in the 10th century BC. According to rabbinic tradition, Deborah also tended to the lamps of the tabernacle, symbolizing light and divine guidance in times of darkness. In one of those dark periods narrated in Judges 4, Israel strayed from God's ways and suffered under the yoke of Jabin, king of Canaan, for twenty years. Amidst suffering and cries for liberation, Deborah emerged as an enigmatic leader, a torch of hope and courage to guide Israel in the wisdom of God. With the death of Ehud, wickedness spread again among the Israelites, and the Lord allowed Jabin, king of Canaan, to take control over them. Sisera, commander of Jabin's army, and his nine hundred iron chariots imposed cruel oppression on Israel. In desperation they cried to the Lord, and it was then that Deborah emerged as a judge and spiritual leader. She exercised her leadership in Ephraim, resolving disputes and restoring justice. Under Deborah's palm tree, the people sought wisdom and guidance, fulfilling what is written in Judges 4, verses 1-5, where her story and role as God's messenger are introduced. Deborah, in her unique position, not only interpreted God's will for specific situations, but also instructed others to follow the divine path. Interestingly, she was the one who summoned Barak to battle, as described in Judges 4 verses 6 and 7, illustrating the dynamic nature of the prophetic role in direct action. Through Deborah, God revealed to Barak the divine plan and his role in it, an echo of the partnership described by Paul in his epistles, where God works sovereignly but also calls his followers to action. Barak's hesitation and the battle without Deborah and her resolute response illustrate a fascinating dialogue between faith and action. The narrative of Deborah and Barak in Judges 4 reveals the interaction between divine sovereignty and human responsibility, where God sets the path but expects his servants to walk in it. Barak's plea for help and Deborah's prompt response highlight the importance of courage and female leadership in the history of redemption. Reflecting on this story, we are reminded of Paul's powerful statement that we are working together with God. Often we passively wait for a divine move, when in reality we are called to take the initiative as Deborah did, not only guiding Barak, but also the nation of Israel to victory and the liberation promised by God. Accompanying Barak, Deborah faced not only armies, but also the spiritual inertia of a hesitant leader. The honor will not be yours, she said, for the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. Judges 4 verses 8 and 9, highlighting this decisive moment, showing the intrinsic connection between obedience and honor in the divine economy. Barak's refusal to lead without Deborah not only delayed action, but also altered the course of victory, directing glory to Jael. 
the true heroine of the ensuing battle. Barak, rallying the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, went to confront with his ten twos enticed men with Deborah by his side. The Bible tells us in Judges 4, verse 10, how Heber the Kenite separated himself from the other Canaanites, signaling an imminent change in events. His choice to camp near Kadesh had strategic implications for what was to come. Upon learning of Barak's movement, Sisera summoned all his forces to the Kishon River, preparing for battle with his iron chariots, symbols of power and oppression. Judges 4 verse 13. It not only reports the gathering of forces, but also the tactical positioning preceding divine intervention. Go, declared Deborah, for this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Judges 4 verse 14, emphasizing the importance of faith and prophecy. Barak, descending Mount Tabor, advanced with his men, as described in Judges 4 verses 14 to 16, where victory manifests not only as a promise, but as a tangible reality through obedient action. Barak's pursuit, Sisera's panic, and the fall of the Canaanite army form a tapestry of divine intervention and human courage illustrated in Judges 4, verses 15 and 16. Sisera's desperate flight and his fatal encounter with Jael, Haber's wife, turned hospitality into judgment when Jael became the executioner of a divine plan, showing that God's will can be accomplished in the most unexpected ways. The narrative demonstrates God's sovereignty, directing events according to His will and purposes. The victory guaranteed by God and Barak's necessary obedience come together to weave a conclusion where faith results in action and action in redemption. The account of Sisera's reception by Jael and her subsequent act of courage and cunning is one of the most dramatic and surprising in the Bible. The detailed description of her actions in Judges 4 verses 18-21, from offering milk to putting Sisera to sleep to the silent execution with a tent peg, reveals a woman of uncommon decisiveness and strength. Sisera's death at the hands of Jael was not just an act of individual bravery, but a prophetic fulfillment that changed the destiny of a nation. Like a shadow moving silently, Jael executed judgment on Israel's enemy, closing with a blow the long period of oppression and bringing a new dawn of freedom and hope to her people. In the whirlwind of events described in Judges, a discreet figure rises. Jael, Heber's wife, a Canate. Although Sisera, commander of King Jabin, did not know, Jael had made a bold decision to align herself with God's purpose, a decision that would change the course of history. In Judges 4 verses 22-24, she acts with deceptive hospitality, sheltering Sisera in her tent, offering him milk and a place to rest, masking her imminent alliance with the people of God. Barak's arrival in pursuit of Sisera marks a turning point. Jael invites him to witness the outcome of her courageous action, the death of the enemy, thus promising victory over Jabin. As it unfolds in Judges 4, verses 23 and 24, this act of subjugating Jabin before Israel illustrates how the constant and growing pressure of the Israelites, with faith and determination, led to the downfall of their enemy. Caesar's death, as described in Judges 4 verse 22, fulfills Deborah's prophecy and exalts Jael, blessed among women, as a divine instrument in the liberation of Israel. The partnership between divine and human is emphasized here as a central theme of spiritual combat, where their combined strength results in liberation and justice. After the victory, Deborah, exemplifying praise and gratitude, guides Israel in songs of celebration, as captured in Judges 5 verses 1 to 31. These victory hymns are not just thanksgiving to God for liberation, but also a way to solidify the leadership of Deborah and Barak, encouraging the nation to follow this model of active faith and gratitude. Deborah and Barak's song in Judges 5 verses 131 
portrays a time when heaven and earth themselves seem to participate in Israel's struggle, an era when the Lord's presence was so powerful that nature itself responded. The song continues describing a time of insecurity and abandonment of God's ways, where Deborah rises as a mother in Israel, restoring order and leadership. Judges 5 speaks of turbulent times under Jael and Sisera, when fear prevented travel on main roads and the villages of Israel were deserted. Deborah's leadership and courage, in response to the choice of new gods, brought renewal and challenged the people to redefine their priorities and alliances. Deborah's poetry pays tribute to the leaders of Israel who rose when needed and calls to the volunteers of war. As she recounts in Judges 5 verses 9 to 11, her heart is with those who, despite danger, chose to fight for their nation and beliefs. The song celebrates these brave commanders and soldiers. Deborah's music also highlights the different social roles in Israel, from those riding on adorned donkeys to the musicians of the villages. Judges 5 verses 11 and 12 is a call for all to recognize and celebrate God's victories, gathering to recount the deeds and strengthen common faith. The song urges Deborah and Barak to arise and lead the people in triumph and praise as they march towards the city gates. This call to awaken and sing is an invitation to action, a refusal to remain inert in the face of conflict, and a celebration of victory achieved through faith and action. The chapter in Judges continues describing the mobilization of the tribes amidst Deborah and Barak, with the exception of the tribe of Reuben, which faces indecision. Reuben's hesitation, highlighted in Judges 5 verse 15, serves as a reminder that inaction can be as harmful as direct opposition and that courageous action in harmony with divine will is crucial for victory. The narrative of Judges emphasizes the complexity of times of war and the nature of faith in action. In the account we find the tribe of Reuben immersed in indecision, while Gilead remained beyond the Jordan. Dan preferred the safety of their homes to joining the battle, and Asher in turn was content to stay in their havens, but Zebulun and Naphtali chose a riskier path, facing death on the battlefields. The battle against the kings of Canaan in Tarnak, near the waters of Megiddo, as described in Judges 5 verses 19 and 20, was extraordinary, marked by celestial and terrestrial phenomena fighting against Sisera. Israel's victory was so impressive that even the stars fought in the skies against Sisera, and the Kishon River swept away the enemies, demonstrating the majesty of creation in harmony with divine will. Judges 5 verse 23 condemns the cities that did not rise with God's people against the mighty warriors, highlighting the curse of the angel of the Lord on the inhabitants of Meroz for their failure to help in the battle. Jael, the most blessed among women, is exalted for her act of bravery, an example of faith in action, choosing the right side in history by facing Sisera with hospitality and fatal cunning. Sisera's death at the hands of Jael is described with palpable realism in Judges 5, verses 26 and 27, showing that she not only welcomed him but confronted him with strength and determination, symbolizing the defeat of oppression and the victory of justice. The passage paints a dramatic scene of the power God gave a woman to change the destiny of Israel. Judges 5 verses 28 to 30 give us a glimpse into the anguish of a mother awaiting the return of her son, Sisera. Her words reflect expectation and denial in the face of the reality of war and its consequences as she imagines the riches he would bring home, unaware that he would never return. The passage concludes with the reflection that this is how the enemies of God fall and those who love him rise like the sun in its power, a powerful metaphor for victory and restoration. 
the 40 years of peace that followed testify to the complete circle of divine justice and the power of praise and gratitude as illustrated in Judges 5 verse 31. The story of Deborah and Barak, rich in details in Judges, not only celebrates but also emphasizes the power of divine guidance in times of oppression and fear. Jabin's tyranny and the threat of his iron chariots represented an almost insurmountable obstacle, but faith and obedience to the prophetic word paved the way for freedom. God's action through the prophetess Deborah, guiding Israel in battle, is a reminder of the need to move in faith and wisdom, promptly obeying divine direction to achieve victory. As Deborah understood, post-victory celebration was as important as the battle itself, recognizing who the true author of liberation is. Psalms 92 verses 1 to 4 echo this attitude of gratitude and worship, reminding us of the importance of beginning and ending the day by acknowledging God's goodness and faithfulness. Music whether with ten-stringed instruments, harp or lyre, is presented as an appropriate expression of the joy that God's works inspire in the hearts of the faithful. Failure to celebrate victories can lead to a cycle of ingratitude and forgetting God, as repeatedly happened in Judges. The leadership of Deborah and Barak offers a lasting lesson on the importance of maintaining faith and gratitude, not only during struggles, but also in triumphs, so that the memory of God's goodness remains alive and active in future generations.